Hello, you found us. Well done. Um, it's the Richard and Judy Book Club, exclusive to W. H. Smith. And here at the moment, we're talking about our summer reads. And, and here's, here's this one. It's fabulous. It's called The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Before Judy and I talk about the book and we hear from the author, just let me remind you that if you buy these books from W. H. Smith, you can either get it here online right now or pop down to the store from W. H. Smith. You will get all this extra content in the back exclusively and free. Uh, you get podcast information, there's a Q&A from Judy and I with the author. It's all good stuff and it's a, it's, it's a good extra read at the back. Anyway, let's talk about the book. What did you think? I loved it. I absolutely loved it as soon as I started it. Um, it's about magic, which sounds a bit weird. It's called The Night Circus and The Night Circus is, a, is a, a magical, literally a magical circus, which only kind of comes to life at night. During the day it's just dormant. Mm. It also travels loads and hundreds and thousands of it, miles all over the world. It reminded me actually as a, as a concept of mm. Doctor Who's TARDIS. Yeah. Um, it just appears. Yeah. Um, it, can, it can cross continents in a night. It can close in Chicago uh, and open in London the, the, the next night. Um, we don't quite know how that happens but the whole point of the what you see at the circus is that it's real magic like as you said the other day like Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Mr. Norrell, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's that kind of, it's genuine magic. It's not sort of you know clowns and you know, people jumping through hoops and acrobats and stuff. They do have acrobats and contortionists, my God. But, but they are sensational and extraordinary. But the whole point of the book is that there are two ancient sorcerers, two men who hate each other but have been living for centuries. One of them discovers he has a young daughter. The other decides to go to an orphanage and adopt a young boy. And these apprentices, as they think of them, are unknown to them, locked in a magical mortal combat with each other. The trouble is, Celia and Marco fall in love. But the dark undercurrent of the book is that they don't realise that they're being played off against each other and that the ultimate game, and it's a bet between the two sorcerers, a simple bet, not even worth very much, is that one of the two has to die at the hands of the other through magic. And uh, the people who go to see the circus don't understand any of what's going on. They don't know. We know because we're in, in, inside the book. But the audiences have no idea that they're seeing real magic. And these aren't conjuring tricks. This is ancient, 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 prehistorical magic. It's a fabulous story. It is beautifully written. I, it's a sumptuous book. And really sadly, we couldn't manage to get Erin Morgenstern, the writer, to, to come over to England. She's so busy in America. So uh, we sat the cameras to her and our questions. And here's what she had to say. I didn't find it difficult to maintain the conceit that real magic existed as something that could actually be practiced. Um, I think the world kind of appeared in my head fully formed as magic was part of the world but kind of clandestine and, and wasn't something that was an everyday thing. So I knew how it fit in the physics and the rules of the, the world and I think in my writing fantasy knowing the rules of the world is one of the most important things when you're writing so that way you have things that you can't break. Like I knew that I um, had certain bounds within what was possible in my magic system. Like you couldn't bring people back from the dead or anything like that. So I had those rules in place and that was the easy part. The hard part for me was taking that real magic and making it look like stage magic within the circus itself. It was the same challenge that the characters have is how far can you go with real magic that people still believe it's just a trick. Uh, anytime anyone asks me like if I, I want magic to be real, it kind of makes me laugh because I think inherently a belief in magic is a belief that extraordinary things are possible and I, that's certainly true. I can't sit here with any, everything that's happened with the book and, and not say that I don't believe that extraordinary things are possible. And I do think that there is real magic, it's just a matter of it's not what we call magic, we, it's not pulling rabbits out of hats. I don't know how my phone works. So things like that are magic to me. I think it's an Arthur C. Clarke quote that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So I think maybe it's a whimsical way to look at the world, but I do think that magic is real.
I think it was necessary for Celia and Marco to be trained for the competition and, and for the competition to have such severe consequences because I didn't want magic to be easy. I didn't want it to be as simple as waving a wand and, and making something appear. I wanted it to be a difficult skill to learn and Celia has some inherent ability with it and, but Marco of course is trained from the ground up and, and I think that I wanted it to be something hard. I didn't want it to be easy. I didn't want it to be something that anyone could do without some rigorous training. And I think that's why the training sequences get a little harsh at some points. Um, and for the consequences of the competition, I wanted there to be consequences. I didn't want it to be something that was just for fun. I didn't, I, I think it helped give it some weight as, as um, making, as far as making the magic seem more realistic in the world, I think giving it that sort of heavy consequences and making it something much more serious was helpful for that. I do describe all my work, including both my writing and my paintings, as fairy tales in one way or another. And I think what it I mean by that is that I like that once upon a time quality. I like that um, that sort of classic tale idea that um, so many of those old stories end up having a sort of universal appeal and, and they become about more than just the, a little girl in the woods or a wolf or a princess in a tower. They mean something beyond that and I that's the kind of feeling I want to be able to capture in my work. And I'm not sure I'm always successful but I, I like that sort of fairy dust sparkle to, to fantasy, and that's something I try to capture in words and in paint. I was definitely influenced by Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. I first read it a few years ago when it came out, mostly because I loved the cover of the book. It was so stark with the raven, and it was this big doorstopper of a book, but I devoured it, and what I loved about it was that it reads like history, but it has the fantasy element so well ingrained within the world that you really do believe that it's an actual historical sort of record rather than fiction. And um, that's one of the things I wanted to capture with the Night Circus. I wanted that, that real, like, I didn't try to be as maybe historically accurate as that book is, um, but I wanted that same sort of feeling, like it felt both both the history of it and the magic of it felt real. I'd count um, Jonathan Strange as one of the major literary influences on the Night Circus, along with The Prestige by Christopher Priest, both the book and the film versions, so though they're very different. They each kind of had their, their flavor influence on the circus, as well as one of my very favorite books is Einstein's Dreams by Alan Lightman. And content-wise, that's very different, but it's written in very short vignettes, and that's kind of where I got the, the format and the short chapters from. Well, thanks, Erin. Um, it is a good book, uh, more than good. It, it, it says breathtaking on the cover, and it actually is. It's dreamy, magical, perfect summer read. But in terms of the magic, please, don't try it at home. <laughs>